I'm John White. With me today is Virginia Owen. Virginia is a master gardener here with the Doniana County office. And Virginia, you have some plant problems? Uh, yes, John. I have some rosemary that I like to snip and use in cooking uh, on occasion. And I looked at this the other day, and it seems to have a uh, spittle bug on it. And I want to know if I can still use this, if I can wash that off and use it in cooking, and should it be treated, and what should I do about this problem? Okay, for rosemary that's going to be used um, in the kitchen, uh, we don't want to use insecticides on it. So a strong blast of water uh, would be good, possibly with a little bit of uh, um, soap, but just a strong blast of water, and you'll have to be pretty persistent on it. Um, the spittle bug encases itself in this frothy, kind of foamy substance that really gives it good protection. It's kind of like an aphid. It is sucking the juice out of the plant, so we just want to hit it with a strong blast of water and really try and dislodge it, knock it off the plant if possible. So that would probably be the best thing if you're going to use this for, uh, for cooking purposes. So that's what I'd recommend doing. Okay. John, the Spanish broom has some severe problems in terms of its appearance. I'm not sure what this is, if it's a problem or if it's just part of the maturation process. What do we have here? Now we have a uh, cottony cushion scale that's starting on it and you have all different uh, from some of the young nymphs on up to some of the adults on it. Uh, the scale of course is a sucking insect so it's sucking a lot of the juice out of the plant and this is a fairly heavy infestation. We can see it on uh, you know several of the different uh, shoots here so uh, that is a pretty heavy infestation so I would uh, probably get this treated I would use a uh, dormant oil use it at about half rate during the summer and uh, we call it a summer oil when it's used at that and that will help to control a lot of the, the scale that's on here there are some of the insecticides that have systemic action where they can be sprayed on taken in through the foliage and we'll have the the uh, insecticide inside the sap system of the plant that will help to kill the scale off also so there's a couple different ways of attacking it but this is a real heavy infestation so uh, I'd get after it pretty quick. John I have a pretty lush patch of English ivy in my backyard that grows on a rock wall uh, earlier this spring I did some severe pruning on some shrubs because they need to be cut back and this is what my ivy has turned into. Now I realize that it's probably exposure to the sun. What do I do about this and will it recover? Okay, um, you're right. It, it is a uh, reaction to the intense sunlight here in the southern part of the state and uh, this is not uncommon on English ivy, especially ivy that has been exposed to the full sun. Um, as your plants grow back, um, they will provide shade again and some of that ivy will get started again if you, you know, were removing some of the plants out of the area and this ivy's in full sun now, it's not going to recover real well. So you really need to look at a, probably a replacement plant because uh, the ivy in our particular part of the state does need um, some protected quarters so that it doesn't receive the full sunlight. Um, Sometimes when water gets up on them, and, um, or especially during the middle of the day, you'll get some magnification of the uh, intense sunlight that burns some of the leaves even more. But um, if this is in a full sun situation now, it probably need to look at another ground cover that really likes the full sun. Okay. John, there's a couple of things going on here that I don't really understand. I'm not sure what this yellow uh, stuff is on these leaves. And then very close by, there seems to be some sort of little web. So is this a problem on uh, oleanders? Okay. This is a problem on oleanders. It is an aphid, and the aphid is host-specific to oleander. And so it won't jump off and go onto your roses. It stays on the oleander. Uh, it won't kill the oleander, but a lot of times it'll stop it from blooming because they'll be feeding so heavy on the new shoots. But what we have on the other leaves on these little stalks is a beneficial called lacewing. And the lacewing is um, coming out to probably go after the, the aphid. So we got a couple, couple things going on there. So you have kind of 
Mother Nature helping out here. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the large number of lacewing eggs that are laid there, I probably would not spray for the aphid. I'd go ahead and let the lacewings hatch and, and uh, see if they don't help take care of the problem. But uh, the aphids uh, are very common on, on oleander, and uh, it's something that you just live with when you have oleander. Virginia, thank you very much for bringing the samples today. And we'll be right back. <laughs>